Hey guys, it's Mega. And today we have another GMMK Pro. Well, no, it's not the GMMK Pro. But it would be if Glorious stuffed the GMMK Pro with steroids and made it a pirate. If you still don't know what board we're talking about, it's the Satisfaction 75 or Sat 75. And it's the Round 2 version. So anyway, let's talk parts. For switches, we have the legendary Z Leos with their ultra tactility. I swear, if you even see the shape of the stem, it looks like an Octomom when she was pregnant with her first batch of kids. And we have, of course, the very expensive knob. Yes, Jim MK Pro knobs, still cheaper in comparison. We have some owl staff to make sure that we don't have any problems with rattle. The sequence of my unboxing is a bit weird, so bear with me. I actually got confused with the bag in the box. I thought the bag only had the board. Didn't think that the rest of the parts would be inside the zipper of the bag as well. So there was a bit of a packing and repacking. Forgive, forgive. Plus, plus. We have a brass plate for it. It's a rare sight considering how the trend is now with keyboards. Sound off in the comments if what plate you guys prefer and or what you guys are using. Cause this is one hell of a good looking board. Even with a pirate theme having minimal hints here and there. And it's heavy. It's a heavy chunky boy. And no it's not a sub $200 board just so you guys know. Especially on the aftermarket. Oof. But let me tell you, this board is just a joy to build. And it's just beautiful. So stick around for the typing test or skip to it. Up to you, but you'll miss the fun. Speaking of missing all the fun, if you guys don't mind, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. And helps me build more keyboards in the future. So stick around and grab a coffee and chill. Don't worry, I checked the Owlstab wires before lubing and installing the stabilizers. For those who are new here, owl stabs are not 100% sure that they get no rattle. Like everything, there are times that they're not perfectly straight out of the factory. But owl labs promise that you can bend the wires back or fix them. But you'll have to do a little bit more compared to the usual wires. Which could be a good or a bad thing depending on the tools you have for the job. Speaking of which, I have been seeing an aluminum tool for straightening wires. Let me know if you guys would be interested to see a review on that. If you guys are wondering what the XHTBDZ is doing for the wires, well, it's kind of like adding holy mod onto the stabilizer, making it sound a bit thumpier when it hits the bottom out. And it sticks better on the wire than that of the Crytox 205 grade 0. And yes, if you guys have noticed, I screwed the stabs from the bottom of the PCB. I know it's less aesthetic than doing it from the top view, but it makes it a lot easier for me, so why not, right? Before I solder the switches, we have to install the knob and the OLED screen. And the knob first, 
or the rotary encoder. And I love the attention to detail on this PCB, by the way. Having support screws for the screen so that it doesn't wobble around when the board is being moved. It's the kind of attention to detail that really makes this board worthy of being called the king of 75s. But of course, it shows this is no beginner board that anyone can build themselves, unless partially built by someone like me. Sorry, the soldering got cut. I was having problems with my camera battery and ended up with corrupted videos. In parts, always remember to buy original Sony batteries. So yeah. This is the color white or cloud white colorway that they have. And ooh baby, it's clean. Can't deny whiteboards just look so immaculate. And Canon keys really did a great number on this board. By the way, sorry if the video is a bit blurred. The camera kept focusing on my hands. In a lot of cases, I forgot the settings were on the lowest aperture. So, my newbie mistake. Getting back to the build. I didn't want to put PE foams on the board because I felt it won't do it much justice and I wanted to keep the sound of the board as much as possible but I did put one layer of masking tape just to round out the sound and to avoid any shorting of the solder points on the bottom of the board. And yes, it's a top mount, but at least it's not pretending to be a gasket mount and then end up to be stiff in the end. So yeah, this is not a flexible board by any means, but it is for sure a beautiful board with that back weight and OLED screen, unique to this layout at least. You can even keep time with that OLED board and you could also keep the date, let's not forget that. That's why it has a battery on the back side. How cool is that? And to top it all off, a knob for all your knobbing needs. Just a classy board. One for the books for sure. So we have the most exciting part of the build, which are the keycaps. Yes, I know it's GMK Bento, but I tried to keep it as nautical as possible but I didn't have the GMK Nautilus on hand, so we have this. But it's still from the sea, right? And white alphas, I thought looked great on the board, and the matching novelties were just chef's kiss. If only GMK could churn out keycaps faster, but really high quality keycaps with just the best sound in my opinion. Although really expensive, you just got to choose really one set that you think will be worth it and the colorway basically that you really want to make the price worth it. Here's your sound test.
stay safe and have a good one.